Story recap here. Today, I'm going to explain an animation, comedy, and fantasy film called Monkey Bone. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Monkey Bone is a famous cartoon show which everyone loves. One of the characters, Stanley, returns to his childhood through hypnosis and talks about having a crush on his teacher. He then suddenly feels excited, so he covers his little manhood with a bag, from which Monkey Bone comes out. Monkey Bone dances with the teacher and kisses her, but Stanley's session with his doctor ends, and he is forced to leave. When the show finishes, an agent named Herb informs his colleagues that the Comedy Channel has just picked them up with an order for six new episodes. He also presents the creator of Monkey Bone, Stu Miley, asking everyone to give him a round of applause. Afterward, Herb introduces Stu to some toy creators, but Stu just wants to go home. Stu's mood only changes when he sees his girlfriend, Julie, telling Herb he's got the ring. Stu urges Julie to leave with him and kisses her, but Herb stops them and shows them some Monkey Bone prototypes. Two guys put the toys in Stu's car, but Stu doesn't really care about them and drives home with Julie. However, as Stu waits for a truck to get out of his way, he accidentally inflates a monkey bone inflatable, which presses against the gas pedal. Stu's car moves backward and crosses the street, eventually crashing into a pole. An injured Stu is taken to the hospital moments later, where Julie introduces herself to the staff as a doctor from the Sleep Institute. As the doctors discuss Stu's condition, Stu's spirit is taken to a strange place. There, Stu sees the psychological baggage station and finds his old dream book in his bag. The book shows Stu's illustrations, but several creatures suddenly distract him. Some statues sing about Stu being in a coma, forcing Stu to enter downtown. Stu sees other people and more creatures, so he runs to a bar to hide. The bartender, Bull, offers him a comatini, and he tells Stu he's a celebrity down there. Bull says downtown is the land of nightmares, and it isn't long before Stu finds Monkey Bone. The little rascal sings for everyone, dancing and changing his clothes before kissing Stu. In the hospital, Stu's body shows no progress. Julie sees Stu's sister, Kimmy, visiting him, hugging her to comfort her. Despite what happened, Kimmy is happy that Stu has managed to give Julie their grandmother's engagement ring, but Julie has no idea what she's talking about. Julie then introduces Kimmy to Dr. Edelstein, who says Stu is stable. Kimmy wants to know when Stu will wake up, but Dr. Edelstein can't give her a sure answer. She also says it took a long time for their father to die, revealing that she made a pact with Stu that they wouldn't let it drag out when their time came. Kimmy wants to pull the plug quickly, so Dr. Edelstein says they should give Stu three months to return. When Julie gets home with her friend, Alice, she pulls a string that shows Stu's drawing, asking her to marry him. Then, Alice notices Stu's dark illustration, prompting Julie to reveal that her boyfriend did that after he first came to her to the sleep lab. Julie says Stu hadn't had a good night's sleep in years, adding that the nightmares would wake him up and he'd just start painting. At the same time, Julie made Stu switch hands and use his left hand to draw, which resulted in him creating Monkey Bone. In downtown, Stu gets sick of Monkey Bone, who keeps talking about Julie. So he puts Monkey Bone in his bag, but the monkey says it's not his fault that he's a figment of the cartoonist's imagination. Stu takes Monkey Bone to a table where a waitress, Kitty, approaches them. Kitty gives Stu his refill and asks what's wrong, saying he seems tense. Stu admits he thinks he'll never see Julie again, regretting that he didn't immediately propose to her. Feeling bad, Kitty assures Stu that Julie is waiting for him, but Monkey Bone escapes and interrupts them by tasting Stu's drink. Pissed, Stu orders Monkey Bone to get back in the bag, only to have his nose pinched by the little troublemaker. Then, Monkey Bone leaves in a bumper car, but Stu has no intention of letting him go and follows him. However, the place suddenly gets dark, and that's when they see a reaper, who gives an old man an exit pass. Getting an exit pass means a person can finally wake up. The old man happily departs downtown and everyone can only watch him in awe. Believing he deserves to wake up too, Stu confronts the reaper and asks when he'll go home. Unfortunately, the reaper is now off duty, apologizing to Stu before leaving. Once the reaper is gone, Stu receives a package from a sculpture. Stu has been invited to a pajama party at Hypnosis Hideaway, making him excited that the big guy will finally hear his case. In the hospital, Julie talks to a sleeping Stu, hoping he'll finally wake up. But Kimmy suddenly arrives and says it's been three months, informing Julie she's already given the order to pull the plug. Back in downtown, Stu attends the party and sees a live feed of Julie's nightmare. In the dream, Stu is about to propose to Julie, but he suddenly disappears. Seconds later, he appears on a hospital bed and Kimmy cuts the tube of the machine that's keeping him alive. Stu's body quickly deflates, leaving Julie devastated. Enraged, Stu breaks the equipment showing the dream, while at the same time, Julie wakes up from her nightmare. 
A few minutes later, Stu sits on a bed with Hypnose and talks to him about Julie's dream. So Hypnose reminds Stu of his pact with Kimmy, saying his sister will pull the plug at 9am. Desperate, Stu asks Hypnose to help him, but Hypnose says he should speak with Death. Hypnose instructs Stu to go to the land of Death, ordering him to steal an exit pass. With the time running out, Stu and Monkey Bone follow a Reaper to the land of Death and get in the back of his car. Then, Stu removes the Reaper's cloak, revealing he's only a spirit. With their guide gone, Stu and Monkey Bone are left screaming in the car as it travels through the steep rails. Meanwhile, Julie plans to wake Stu up using Onarix, a nightmare juice. She wants to crank up Stu's nightmares and scare him awake, but her colleagues are unsure about her idea. In the land of death, Stu wears the Reaper's cloak and disguises himself as one to sneak into Death's office. Death and her assistant are busy dealing with the new Reapers, but Death soon notices Stu in front. Stu is forced to introduce himself as Herb, and Death wants to know why his cloak is stained. Then, the assistant places an exit pass on the table, so Monkey Bone, who's inside the big cloak with Stu, immediately volunteers to take it to downtown. Stu tries to stop the monkey from meddling, but Monkey Bone won't listen. Now suspicious, Death asks Stu to step to the side before calling her dog. The dog bites and pulls Stu's cloak, exposing the cartoonist and his sidekick. Instead of surrendering, Stu fights the reapers who try to get him, while Monkey Bone takes the exit pass and gives it to his master. Infuriated, Death's head suddenly explodes, and her eyeballs hits Monkey Bone in the face. The explosion throws Stu and Monkey Bone out the window, but they luckily land on dirty laundry. With no time to waste, Stu takes a train to downtown with Monkey Bone and gets rid of the Reaper operating it. In Death's office, Death gets a new head from her assistant and quickly looks for Stu and Monkey Bone, who are trying to fight off another Reaper. Monkey Bone eventually crashes with the Reaper and as Stu calls out to him, he's unaware that Julie already injected Onorix into his body in the hospital. At that moment, Stu gets sucked into a nightmare induced by Julie. He becomes a creature about to be killed by a doctor, but Monkey Bone pulls him out of the bad dream with the Reaper's scythe and escapes with him using a flying bicycle. The two soon reach downtown, where Monkey Bone knocks Stu out with a wrench before stealing the exit pass and using it to leave. As it turns out, Hypnose made a deal with Monkey Bone and he has big plans for Stu's body. In the hospital, Dr. Edelstein is about to pull the plug when Stu suddenly wakes up. Julie doesn't know that Monkey Bone is inside Stu's body and takes him home, trying to ignore his odd behavior. Julie talks to fake Stu about the proposal and says she's ready to marry him but the whole mood changes when the dog, Buster, bites the guy. Scared, fake Stu gets on top of a shelf and throws toys at Buster and Julie as he screeches like a monkey. That night, fake Stu hits his head on the bed frame as he tries to use his charm on Julie. As if that isn't enough, Julie accidentally kicks him in the face as she sits down, rendering him unconscious. Concurrently, the real Stu is imprisoned in downtown with disillusioned people and criminals. He meets Stephen King, Jack the Ripper, Lizzie Borden, and Attila the Hun. Then, Hypnose arrives and reveals they need fresh nightmares because they'd die without them. Monkey Bone is tired of being a figment of Stu's imagination, which is why he made a deal with Hypnose. In exchange for Stu's body, Monkey Bone will help Hypnose get a heap of new nightmares. Hypnose knows that Julie's figured out the chemical basis of bad dreams, also aware of the existence of the nightmare juice Onorix. Finally realizing that Monkey Bone will spread Onorix among the living to create more nightmares, Stu can't help but feel worried and hopeless. On the other hand, fake Stu is more than happy to be interviewed by the press at home about merchandising. Julie tells Herb not to take advantage of his friend since he's not himself, but Herb's busy talking on the phone. Fake Stu soon enters the house with the reporters and shows them around, leaving Julie confused because her boyfriend hates merchandising. As he sleeps that night, Monkey Bone, or Fake Stu, is visited by Hypnose in his dreams. Hypnose reminds him he's supposed to make nightmares, instructing him to take Onorix and get to work. Hypnose also points out that Fake Stu might be a free man during the day, but he can always show up in his dreams. Frightened, Fake Stu goes to the Sleep Institute to steal Onorix and replace it before quickly returning to bed. But Julie wakes up and asks where he's been, so Fake Stu talks about the proposal to change the subject. He says he knows Julie's mad at him for not proposing to her, pretending to go to sleep when Julie denies it. In downtown, Kitty visits Stu and confesses that she likes him. While Stu appreciates that, he asks Kitty if there's any way he can get a message to warn Julie about what Monkey Bone is up to. Unfortunately, before Kitty can answer, the guard forces her to leave. At home, Fake Stu and Herb faces the Burger God rep to discuss the launch of Mega Monkey Meal. They also meet with the Bazoom Toys rep to talk about the creation of a Monkey Bone toy that emits gas from behind. 
Cake Stew then asks the rep if they can fill up the toys with a particulate solution of one part powdered chemical enzyme to ten parts water, and the guy says yes. In the evening, Julie shares with Alice that her boyfriend is acting weird. She believes it's because of the onorex, saying the stew she loves is gone. Of course, Julie is right, and to make things worse, she's unaware that Fake Stew has already started putting onorex into the monkey bone toys. Moments later, Julie and Alice see Buster chasing Fake Stew outside. They then turn around and continue watching TV, so they don't witness Fake Stew using the onorex spray he made on Buster. Seconds later, Buster dreams about cats trying to hurt him. In Hypnosis Realm, Kitty helps the God of Sleep calm down after watching Buster's dream. She also flirts with him and keeps him occupied as she steals his key. In the Land of the Living, the Monkey Bone toys are being prepared for distribution. Inside the house, Julie receives a call from her colleague, Hutch, and learns that Onorix is gone. Hutch says somebody switched it for a beaker of grape Kool-Aid, causing Julie to suspect fake Stu. Back in downtown, Kitty gives Stu some food and Hypnosis key. Stu is reluctant to accept her help, but the waitress wants him to find his way back to Julie. Then, Kitty leaves and attacks the guard, allowing Stu to escape. During a fundraising event, Fake Stu prepares to give out the monkey bone toys. Upon reaching the land of death, Stu immediately gets captured but still asks Death to help him. He explains why he stole an exit pass and reveals Hypnosis' plan, asking Death to give him one hour to stop monkey bone and talk to Julie. Surprisingly, Death decides to aid Stu and kicks him out of her realm. It isn't long before Stu wakes up on an operating table in the body of an organ donor with a broken neck. Although he's struggling to move, Stu gets out of the operating room, ties a jacket around his neck, and tapes his stomach before leaving the hospital. The doctors go after him, but Stu still manages to reach his house, where he puts a T-square on his back and tapes it to his head to support his neck. Then, Buster gives him a newspaper showing the fundraising event at the Museum of Natural History, so Stu takes Julie's ring and quickly heads there. Stu takes a bus, unaware that the doctors and Buster are following him. In the museum, Herb accidentally sprays himself with Onorex and quickly washes his purple face. He sees in the mirror that his clothes are coming to life, so he hurriedly removes them, causing a scene as he flees. Herb also urges everyone to take their clothes off, prompting Fake Stu to take the mic and make a speech. Then, Fake Stu performs a song and dance number before proposing to Julie, who's confused to see a new ring. She's expecting to get the ring that belonged to Stu's grandmother, leaving Fake Stu confused. Meanwhile, Stu gets inside the museum by swinging on bars while the guards stop the doctors from entering the place. He makes a grand entrance and talks to Julie, saying the man she believes to be her boyfriend is Monkey Bone. Unfortunately, a guard takes him out, but Julie follows them and talks to Stu. Stu explains everything, but when Julie doesn't believe him and walks away, he mentions her nightmare wherein Kimmy stops his life support. As if on cue, Buster suddenly arrives, so Julie begs Stu not to lie to her. Wasting no time, Stu gives Julie his grandmother's ring and says he meant to give it to her the night they got into an accident. They then go inside to warn everyone that the toys are toxic, and Stu angrily asks the mischievous monkey to get back in the bag. Instead, fake Stu breaks the piñata containing the toys, causing everyone to rush to get one monkey bone toy. Afterward, he escapes to the rooftop and releases a giant monkey bone balloon, but Stu follows him. The two fight while holding onto the ropes, unbothered that the organ donor's organs are falling off his body. At the same time, the doctors make sure to collect them. Moments later, the two men grab a pair of shears and hedge cutter from gardeners, which they use to attack each other. Stu loses his garden shears and falls when fake Stu cuts his rope, but he manages to hold onto another rope and pulls the cord off his sidekick's hedge cutter. The two are determined to get rid of one another, but their fight ends when a cop shoots down their balloon. They immediately die when the balloon falls from the sky, but that doesn't stop them from fighting as they make their way to downtown. Now out of Stu's body, Monkey Bone is certain he's doomed. There's nothing much Stu and Monkey Bone can do as they fall, but luckily Death uses a robot to catch them. Stu accepts that he now belongs to Death, while Monkey Bone still tries to find a way to escape the situation. However, Death has no intention of letting him go and returns him to Stu's head, where he belongs. She also sends Stu back to the land of the living, where he wakes up inside an ambulance next to the organ donor. After borrowing the driver's razor to shave, Stu approaches Buster and Julie. Julie can't believe what she's seeing, but Stu assures his girlfriend that it really is him by kissing her. Sad to say, Herb is still not in his right mind and continues to ask the people around to remove their clothes. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.